In the last video, Lin had finally reached level 30, got his hands on a few new skills, and then spent a few days grinding dungeons to level them up. He then returns to the small courtyard and learns about a new place called Eternal Trial Grounds. As we continued the story, Lin listened with growing interest. Seeing that he wasn't afraid, but rather quite excited, White Divine nodded in satisfaction. Then, he started explaining the crucial reason for sending Lin to the Eternal Trial Grounds. Turned out, in the central area of the upper layer, there's a secret realm called the Divine Selection. By entering this realm, one can obtain something called divinity. This divinity has significant benefits, one of which is greatly increasing the chance of class evolution during one's second class transfer. With Lin already possessing the Nirvana Crystal, obtaining divinity would raise his evolution probability to about 99% by then. This is because the divinity grows stronger as he levels up, which is why White Divine wanted him to go there so early on. In addition to this secret realm, there's a random dungeon that might appear in the upper layer called the Dragon Palace. Encountering it depends on luck, but if he finds it, he should choose the Hell Level difficulty. Completing it would reward him with a Dragon Crystal, which can help awaken a talent, which would otherwise wait until his second class transfer. However, even Dragon Crystal doesn't guarantee it. White Divine reassured Lin not to worry too much. Even if he didn't encounter the dungeon or failed to awaken a talent, they could still use the mermaid's tear Lin had previously acquired to help him awaken his talent nonetheless. Lin made sure to remember everything. White Divine smiled at him, and after saying what he needed to say, he then asked Lin if he was up for the challenge. Recalling how Mo Yun was willing to spend a year keeping her level suppressed, just for a higher chance of successful evolution during the second class transfer, combined with his teacher's emphasis, it was clear how crucial the divinity and the eternal trial grounds were. Determined, he stood up and earnestly declared that he was ready to go. White Divine took out a large assortment of items from his storage space and spread them on the stone table. There was a variety of high-level items, each with different functions. Judging by the looks, all of them seemed high quality. There were high-level dungeon escape talismans, cool-down amulet, puppet talismans, and random teleportation talismans. Anything he thought Lin might need, he brought out. Many of these items had one sole purpose, which was for safety. For example, the puppet talisman could block a fatal blow, and others were for escape. Despite knowing Lin's strength, White Divine was still a bit concerned, and repeatedly reminded him to stay safe. Lin nodded, understanding that he wasn't just doing this for his teacher, but also for himself. He was determined not to let White Divine down. He thanked his teacher, and then Meng Anwen, who had been very quiet, revealed a small tower in his hand. As he began to use his ability, it was clear that sending Lin away so early also made him a bit anxious, but he also knew that acquiring divinity sooner was better. The divine tower appeared in Meng Anwen's palm, slowly expanding. What followed was a beam of light that enveloped Lin. In an instant, Lin left White Divine's courtyard and found himself in an unfamiliar place. Looking around, he noticed the air was filled with a weird smell and the sky was somewhat dark. Strange plants surrounded him, but there wasn't anyone in sight. As he took a few steps forward, the wind whispered in his ears, and he could distinctly smell blood and lingering souls in the air. Remembering his teacher's warnings, he quickly donned his skeletal armor. He kept his guard up and summoned two gold-tier skeletal warriors, one in front and one behind, watching over him. After a long while, he finally encountered his first living creature in this place. It was a monster covered in rocks, but surprisingly it was only level 41. However, its stats were ridiculously high, with spirit and strength both reaching 20,000 and vitality at 30,000. It also had two special traits that reduced physical and elemental damage taken. As soon as the monster spotted Lin, it attacked, swinging its massive arm. A giant tornado hurtled toward him. Lin had no time to react and was hit, sending his two skeletal warriors flying. Fortunately, his skeletal armor protected him, leaving him unharmed. He summoned a few more skeletal warriors, who charged at the monster with their great swords at his command. Despite the skeletons using their upgraded rampage strikes, the monster's attributes and special traits made it pretty tough to take down easily. Lin joined the battle, using bone spikes to summon thick spikes from the ground. With the relentless attacks from the skeletal warriors, the rock monster finally fell. The system notified him that he had killed the Black Rock monster, 
and earned 1,050,000 experience points. From its level, it was clear that the Black Rock monster might have been the weakest mob around. After recalling his injured skeletal warriors to recover, Lin became even more cautious. Suddenly, a mocking voice echoed in the air. He he he. Humans. Lin turned to see an abyssal demon with eight arms hovering in the air. The demon seemed pleased with its luck while licking its blade-like arms. It was anticipating a tasty dinner. Little did it know, Lin had slain countless of these demons back in the Yuan battlefield. Shaking his head, Lin felt disgusted to encounter such trash so soon. Seeing Lin very quiet but not fleeing, the demon assumed he was paralyzed with fear. It roared in excitement and charged at Lin. Suddenly, it noticed a slight smirk on Lin's face. In an instant, several red shackles appeared and restrained it. Without hesitation, Lin used corpse explosion, making good use of the black rock monster he had just defeated. With a loud explosion, Lin gained not only 1.62 million experience points, but also 1,000 military merit. This made him quite pleased, thinking his teacher had sent him to a great place. A few hours later, Lin continued advancing through the forest when, suddenly, a portal formed not far from him. He immediately became alerted. In the next moment, a creature flew out. It was entirely blue, clad in armor, with two wings on its back. Lin recognized it immediately. This was a dragon. A few more of them emerged from the portal. However, Lin remained vigilant, remembering that his teacher had warned him that all the other races here were enemies. The dragons quickly noticed Lin. A human, they shouted. One cloaked dragon claimed he could smell the scent of dragons on Lin, insisting that he must have killed one of their own before. Hearing this, Lin wasn't surprised. The monsters in the hell-level outpost dungeon were all dragonkin-type monsters. Using his detection skill, he saw the stats of the leading dragon knight. The knight was quite powerful, at level 48, with skills like limitless defense, hardened skin, and group taunt, and several more skills along with three special traits. Simply put, he was really tanky. Lin did some comparisons. It seems that the Dragon Knight's attributes and special traits were clearly superior to those of human knights. The dragons swiftly adjusted their formation and applied with various buffs from their support. Led by the Dragon Knight, they charged at Lin, mocking Lin as being a mere level 30 human professional. But in the next instant, a red light flashed from Lin's palm as countless red shackles shot out, casting a slowing curse. Their speed dropped instantly, but the shackles shattered just as quickly. One of the dragons smirked, revealing that they were naturally resistant to curses. They hovered in the air, seemingly waiting for Lin to struggle. However, Lin wasn't bothered. He followed up with bone spikes. Countless sharp spikes burst from the ground, whistling through the air. Despite the overwhelming number, the dragons remained unfazed. To them, what could a mere level 30 human skill possibly do? They had the hardest dragon scales after all. Well, they clearly don't know who they are going up against. As expected, then came the screams. The bone spikes pierced through their body effortlessly, slicing through their prized dragon scales like butter. This attack inflicted significant damage, but the enemy healer quickly cast a spell, and their wounds began to heal rapidly. As the leading knight wondered how a level 30 human could wield such powerful skills, Lin unleashed bone spikes again. The dragon knight roared, activating a group defense skill that formed a massive barrier, protecting them all. This time, they learned their lesson and barely blocked the attack. Charge down and kill him! Mage, attack! The dragon knight shouted frantically. In the next instant, flames erupted from a staff and a massive fireball was shot down from above. Lin, protected by his skeletal armor, stood unharmed amidst the fire. Around him, countless skeletal warriors emerged from the ground. He summoned his scythe and called forth the undead general, now a gold-tier undead general who's capable of leading a legion of 300 skeletons. However, Lin chose to only summon one. Raising his scythe, he pointed at the dragon professionals above and commanded, Lead my soldiers and annihilate them. The undead general's eyes glowed red, releasing an aura that enhanced all the skeletons with legion enhancement. At the same time, the group barrier shattered. He looked down in disbelief at the horde of skeletons below. The dragons panicked, but they had no choice. Charge with me, the knight yelled. Just as he prepared to use his limitless defenses and other skills to break through, his roar turned into a scream as a spark of blue flames engulfed his head. 
Losing control, he plummeted straight to the ground. After seeing the soul flame, the other dragons had no idea what had happened, but they knew one thing. They needed to get the hell out of there. However, Lin had no intention of letting them escape. The skeletal mages cast their spells toward them, and soon, a massive tornado flew towards them and brought all of them down. The skeletal warriors charged forth. Within seconds, Lin received notifications. Dragon Knight, Dragon Warrior, Dragon Mage, and Dragon Healer defeated. Each kill earned him 1.42 million experience points and 1,000 merits. Lin was delighted to learn that killing dragons also earned him military merits. And with that, he's now a four-star lieutenant. After the fight, he gathered his loot and recalled the undead general and the skeletons. He hoped that being a lone level 30 human might attract more enemies, allowing him to farm merits and level up more easily. Unbeknownst to Lin, right after he killed the dragon squad, furious roars echoed within a massive dragon castle. The person was furious when he realized his team had been wiped out. His roar shook the entire castle as he vowed to find the one responsible and tear them apart. Hours later, Lin continued to wander through the forest, lamenting only if he had the ability to fly, or at least have a flying mount. Both the demons and dragons had the ability to fly, but humans needed to reach a high level just to float temporarily. He let out a sigh, reflecting on this major disadvantage for human professionals. Suddenly, the ground began to shake. In his line of sight, a dozen figures were running toward him. To his surprise, they were abyssal demons, accompanied by a squad of dragon professionals. But why were they together? 